Mexico City is a wonderful place to visit if you want to escape the colder winter months in the US. That's exactly what my wife and I did this March, and the city was much safer, cheaper, and more beautiful than we expected. I recommend staying and exploring the three super tourist-friendly areas of Roma Norte, La Condesa, and Palenco. I personally just loved how walkable the city is, it reminded me of New York City, and there were people walking dogs everywhere. And I also ended this trip with a volcano hike just outside the city, so there is so much to see, eat, drink, walk through, explore, and hike in and around Mexico City. Every trip these days start with having to say goodbye to our dog Sasha, who goes to boarding while we travel. Our direct flights from Denver to Mexico City were under four hours, and it was cool getting to see what I think are Jupiter and Saturn out my window. There was Wi-Fi when we arrived at Mexico City's airport, but we made sure to pre-purchase an eSIM for my iPhone with Airlo. After a quick Uber to our Airbnb, we grabbed the easiest food right on our block, this delicious pizza. Just because it was a travel day and we were tired, we wrapped the night up by getting some bottled water for drinking at the 7-Eleven and then went to bed. I was looking at hotels in the area, but I ended up picking this Airbnb because it had lots of space, this mask, lots of natural light, especially in the kitchen area over here, and this big open balcony area. Oh, and I shot this whole video on an iPhone 14 in case you're wondering. But the main reason for this Airbnb was its location, in the heart of La Condesa and the parks nearby. Our first stop was a quick coffee at Quintin Cafe, which had good vibes, a great cappuccino, and this gentleman. We continued walking west and had a small breakfast at Cafe Milo. After a few more minutes walking, we reached our destination, Chapultepec Castle. But Mika's very interested in all the Mexican squirrels running around everywhere. <laughs> We made sure to arrive right as they opened, so we'd mostly have the place to ourselves, and it was definitely the right call. There were beautiful grand staircases, colorful murals, paintings, lots and lots of portraits, and in general, just large depictions of Mexican history, but also these very small dogs fighting, and this dope minimalist dinner party. The best part was the black and white tile area, which had a great view of downtown skyscrapers, the actual living rooms for the royalty of the castle, this bathtub, and this amazing dining hall. So we came to the castle right when it opened at 9, so there was less people, it's starting to get crowded, and it's also starting to get hot. We passed this monument, and made our way through the downtown area and stopped at Nido Cafe for coffee and a frittata. These purple flowers and in general just springtime prettiness was everywhere as we walked into the Roma Norte area. This naked statue looked on as this Mexican husky took a dip. Dogs love water fountains here in Mexico City. Mika checked out the hipster pop-up stalls and we indulged my coffee addiction for the third time today. I got some coffee to take home, which turned out to be absolutely delicious by the way, and realized that Frida was on the 500 peso bill, foreshadowing. And we walked by Pandaria Rosetta, which was swarmed, so we didn't even try. Somehow we found ourselves surrounded by other tourists and big white umbrellas in this expensive pop-up bazaar. Mika looked at rings, but didn't get anything. Lots of shopping to be done before our reservation. I made reservations at Maximo a few weeks back, and it turned out to be one of the best meals of the trip, so I'm glad we did. The place had a cool bathroom, so you know it's good. All of the food was great, beets with greens, octopus with radishes, wife-sized tortillas, and raviolis with peas. I got to look at this mountain tapestry the whole time and the staff was really nice. We followed up this nice meal with baby monkey ice cream and an Uber over to the Four Seasons Hotel where I had booked a surprise massage for Mika. And I'm enjoying a cappuccino and I also bought her some sunscreen because she loves it. So surprise, surprise, surprise. And before dinner, we walked around Parque Mexico, which is always full of life and stopped at Churria El Moro. The minimalist white and blue design is almost as famous as their delicious and fresh churros, which we got dipped in cinnamon sugar. And I should have had one, but I had all four just because they were so good. As the sun set, we walked over for our seven o'clock reservation at Merkava, an Israeli restaurant, which turned out to be just okay. 
Not great, not bad. We should have rather roamed around to get more street tacos. <laughs> Day two started as most days should, around 8 a.m. and with some general shenanigans. Mexico City is special because of the amount of green and trees and beautiful areas to walk. And our destination this morning was Lardo. And our mission was brunch, which involved fruit, coffee, and eggs. This place is getting busy. So we hit it at the right time. There were runners and cyclists everywhere, and it turned out that the Sunday Ciclovia was happening. The city sections off a good length of space for people to run and bike like a marathon, which is really cool, and I regret not having time to run it a bit. We took an Uber ride down past some big business towers and arrived in Coyacan, a neighborhood south of Mexico City. I noticed this cafe had over 14,000 reviews on Google Maps, so I stopped for an espresso, but ended up getting two double espressos. So four espressos. <laughs> Too many espressos. Poking through this art park before the Frida Museum. And it was good. We got the tickets ahead of time because the place was popular. There were people taking selfies, knockoff Frida art for sale, and coconut carts. They make you pay a little extra to get a sticker uh, so that you can take photographs inside. So here are a few that I snapped before feeling just generally overwhelmed by the cramped space. But after going through a few rooms in the kitchen, seeing her art and representations of what her normal life was like, uh, you make it out into this outside area, uh, which is all green and blue and relaxing. Yeah, that was good. We looked at art, we bought some art, now we're going to take an Uber to the meetup. I decided to set up a meetup while here in Mexico City, so announced on Instagram uh, a cafe near the Airbnb for subscribers to meet up at, and it was really nice getting to say hi and drink coffee with some people. Mika took some clips while I was busy and then did some shopping nearby. And the owner of Centero Apparel helped organize the event and brought some pieces for me to try on, which I would uh, take up on the volcano the next day. So it was good meeting him and all of the subscribers and thank you to everyone who stopped by. So that was really nice. I enjoyed talking to everybody. Got a sweet hoodie for the summit. Whatever I do, I have no idea what I'm going to like. <laughs> We walked over to Molino El Pujol, a smaller sister location of the Netflix famous Pujol restaurant. And after deciphering the menu a bit, we ended up getting some tacos, quesadillas, and corn. Next, we took an Uber to the central area of the city, and it was the weekend, so El Amada Central Park was filled with locals and carts selling food and drinks and snacks. There's a different vibe over here in Central. We're gonna look at these big buildings and plazas, maybe get a taco, and mangoes, of course. The next hour was a whirlwind of hot, busy, crowded walking around and looking at old buildings and just in general feeling overwhelmed. This causes me anxiety. I'm sure there was more to see and do, especially the museums and ruins in the area, but we couldn't last very long walking in the heat in this crowd. So we got an Uber back to our Airbnb, took a breather, and then strolled back over to the park right next door. Mexico Park is also busy, but in a more relaxing and fun way. And they have a dog park. So we stayed here a bit. I would steal that dog. I was craving more tacos, so we walked over to a place called El Parnita, which was amazing, delicious tacos. And we wrapped up the night with dessert at Secret Donut Society, which we took over to the plaza again, and we watched the sunset. The next morning, Mika had a flight back to Denver alone, so we grabbed breakfast at Quintin one last time and then parted ways. I took some time walking around the Amsterdam pathways before checking out of the Airbnb. And my YouTuber friends Cody and Victoria had just arrived into Mexico City, so we met up to have brunch. And I grabbed an Uber back to the airport to get my rental car as Mika flew overhead, right past where I planned on hiking the next day. I picked up my little white rental car and started the hour drive out of Mexico City to a place called Ameca Meca. The road conditions were not fantastic, lots of potholes and divider lane lines missing on the roads at a lot of times, but I eventually started to see the outlines of the volcanoes that I would be hiking between. And after a cow crossing and a turn onto a dirt road, I had made it to my destination, a small boutique hotel on a family-owned farm. 
I checked into my room, which was very large and overly nice for my solo traveling circumstances, but I felt like kind of spoiling myself a little bit and just having some kind of interesting stay in that area, which didn't have much. This was really the only nice hotel that I could find. So there's a maze here. I'm definitely not going in. <laughs> After watching Harry Potter Goblet of Fire, uh -huh. my boy. I walked around the beautiful grounds, but quickly learned that it was a weekday and I was the only guest here. <laughs> but I found some friendly cats to pet and 10 guard dogs that were not as friendly. I couldn't help but wish that Mika was here to enjoy just how beautiful and peaceful this place was. The food was by far the best part of this day because the family basically had like two private chefs cooking for them and me. So Marco, the owner of this place, just hooked me up with this fuego uh, so I can have some hot food. Really nice guy. And he kept calling my freeze dried meals space food. So now I can eat space food. <laughs> Thank you, Marco. And at sunset, I took a walk past their garden, which was growing a lot of the food that I ate that night and had really good views of the two volcanoes looming in the distance. It was day four, and now hike focused, my plan was to wake up early, pack up, eat as much breakfast as I could just to pack the carbs, and delicious Cuervos Rancheros and fresh coffee really hit the spot. I really enjoyed the stay, and the owner Marco was so friendly, and if you're ever in the area, please do visit and say hello for me. I drove about an hour into the mountains and watched constant little eruptions grow larger as I drew closer and closer. The increased elevation brought the familiar smell and profile of pine trees, and I was just really getting excited to get on trail. I paid a very small fee to get a bracelet permit and drank as much water as I could just because it was a dry volcano hike with no water sources. I would have to carry all of the water for the entire hike, so I brought just about two liters of water. It took me about four hours to hike seven miles this first day with good elevation gain. I approached Itza with Popo erupting behind me, and the trailhead had a few cars and people, but I didn't really pass many other hikers. I was definitely very alone on this hike. It was hot and dry and sunny and rocky, and eventually the elevation started to get to me. So I took more and more breaks because, you know, I was hiking over 15,000 feet, which is high. It's higher than any peaks in Colorado, regardless living in Denver, which is just a mile high. I was well over any elevation where trees or bushes or plants could grow, and the air started to get colder, even in the direct sunlight, which I hid from in my sun hoodie. I eventually reached the little mountain hut where I planned on spending the night and was greeted by a stray dog. I was all alone in the hut except for the dog who I named Nancy Wheeler, and it was nice to have a safe spot to rest, but I was all alone on top of a mountain in Mexico. The loneliness and isolation of it started to creep in with the fading daylight. I needed to get as much rest as possible for tomorrow's ascent up to the top of the volcano ridge, and there was a little bit of ice on the glacier still during this hotter and drier season, but I didn't plan on going that far. So it wouldn't be too bad once I just got up there. Clouds started to roll in as visibility dropped and it got darker and darker. I shared some of my precious water with Nancy and started making my bed before heating up water for dinner. Macaroni and cheese with hot sauce and coffee was on the menu for tonight. It was also very good, but I was also very hungry, so I think anything would have tasted good. After I could no longer keep myself busy with small little chores, I was left to watch the sunset and lounge around with Nancy. I couldn't help but wonder what this sunset looked like from back down in Mexico City, whose lights shone brightly in the middle of the night after the clouds disappeared. The next morning, visibility was fantastic, and I started off not wanting to waste any time. I was almost out of water and food, so I wanted to reach some sort of goal before turning back and escaping down the mountain. Other Mexican peaks, including the highest peak in Mexico, or Zaba, broke through the low clouds on the horizon as Popo erupted softly to my back. I reached Glacier de San Agustin at almost 17,000 feet and decided to call it a day Due to the dwindling supplies and strong wind and, you know, elevation starting to give me constant headaches. Volcano hikes are tougher than my usual hikes and really make you appreciate flowing water and tree cover and the sound of birds. <laughs> 
and conquering passes rather than peaks. So this wasn't a true summit, but I'm still glad I did it. Today's video is sponsored by Waterdrop. Look at my little treasure trove of drink paradise. I got micro drink, micro light, and my favorite, fruit fusion micro tea. No need for tea bags or brew time. Perfect for on the go or editing YouTube videos. You gotta drink it hot. I'm talking 140 degrees and safe in your thermos tumbler. I'm staying hydrated and productive and you can too. Use code Craig for 15% off for three weeks. And the best way to support me is to support my sponsors. So thank you, Waterdrop.